everybody. Welcome to another episode of Disney with the Ducks. I am your host tonight, Carly, and I am joined by my awesome co-host, Jeff. Hello. Kevin. Hey. Mean Jean. What's up? And Crawl. Hello, everyone. <laughs> that was so nice after the sup. And tonight we are going to continue our series that we've started with the heroes and villains. And tonight we're going to talk about henchmen, which might be one of my more favorite words lately. But before we get into the show, I always like to start off the show just like you guys asking weird random questions. And you guys have no prep for this. But by the time this show comes out, we will have started the back to school season. So I thought I would ask everybody's favorite subject in school. I'm not going to pressure anybody to say English, but, you know, bonus points if you do. Kevin, <clears throat> favorite school subject, as if I didn't know. Probably probably physics. And that's kind of why I went wow. into engineering. Because physics is, is the background that serves for all engineering. Engineering is applied physics, so... Um, I learned early on that I, I I was really intrigued by physics and and understanding how all that works. And so then I went to college and found out how hard physics really is <laughs> <laughs> with, with uh, transformers and toys in the backyard. It's there's actual equations that are used to do that. So uh, once I was able to pick up on that, build up my calculus skills, then I was off to the races. But that. That was really the thing that got me going into engineering, and um, that's my favorite subject. Nice. And that's like equations where the devil said, let me put some letters in mathematics. Oh, yeah. So I applaud you. How about yeah, you, Eugene? Yeah, I mean, I, I would have to say, you know, uh, nuclear, uh, no, just joking. Um, English <laughs> and Thermodynamics. Uh, uh, English and history were my two favorite subjects. That, mainly because my my english teacher i had the same teacher in small classes for you know for four for four years and so it was really good and then history i just i always love history i find it very interesting i read history you know to this day um mm -hmm. just very interesting to me our history class would have been your current events right gene <laughs> pretty much yeah. <laughs> Golly, you're such much, a man. jerk <laughs> that's great wow I think, that's terrible I think wow <laughs> I, I think I might have. Yeah, I apologize. Wow. So, wow. So with that snort, John, tell us yours. So, so I was a nerd and I loved school. Um, so, I mean, you know, Gene, you mentioned history. I loved history and I loved like mm -hmm. political science class and government class. Um, but, I, I, you know, I also love music class because I was in bands, every band in my school and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I think my favorite um, was science. I mean, just in general, I Kevin, I loved physics, too. I actually went to college. I wanted to be a, a high school physics teacher. Um, mm -hmm. Space and astronomy were our still one of the things I, I just love learning about, reading about everything. Uh, and also like Kevin, I realized physics was very hard. Um, so I became a business major <laughs> so, <laughs> because the math is so much easier uh, when you're on the accounting and finance side uh, For sure. than it is on the engineering and, and physics side. So um, yeah, so that's, that's it. I, I would say, I think uh, science and especially physics was probably my favorite class in high school. I hope no like prospective college physics students are listening because now they're like <laughs> crying in a corner somewhere. I mean, I considered myself uh, fairly intelligent and good at math when I was in high school, and yeah, that was a whole other level when you get the the count classes and stuff in college. I so, took physics in high school. I had no desire to take it after that. No, yeah. No yeah. Yeah. All right, Jeff. How about you? I'm kind of torn between either lunch, nap time, or milk break. <laughs> I'm not sure which one of those three would have been my favorite, but they're all probably equally high on my list. So the lunch with the uh, pizza and the corn, or oh, the, the, the uh, Friday the square pizza yeah. with the cubic, uh, the cubed uh, the pepperoni. square pepperoni. Yeah. Oh yeah, you get so square mad pepperoni. Oh, yeah. there were cubes. Oh yeah, minced pizza, pizza, but not square pepperoni. It's square, square pepperoni, pepperoni on square pizza. Wow. Not yeah. like thin sliced squares. These are like. No, they were like real cubes. Oh, cubes. Like cubes. cubes. Yeah, like a Totino's yeah. pizza. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Got you. Yes. 
Jess yeah. still gets mad at me because I go to work and obviously I'm a teacher. So she's surrounded by the good pizza all the time. And there's, mm -hmm. they still have that rectangular pizza with the cubed pepperoni. And so. she has never brought me yeah. home a piece. No. Our district has switched to Little Caesars, I think because it's cheaper with the $5 hot and ready. So they just bring in a truckload of those every Thursday. <laughs> so my really? kids never even get to experience the amazing pizza we had as kids. <laughs> so did you guys ever always... have the stuff cheesy bread? Like we had the, the like Bosco bread. sticks? They weren't really yeah. Bosco sticks, but they're very similar. Oh, okay. But we, the we Ohio had, version like, of Bosco sticks. Yeah, sticks, we had slightly more people worse, knock off. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, as an English teacher, because that's what I went to college for, even though that's kind of what I'm doing now, but maybe. Um, I've got to say, this is super weird, but I just had this conversation with one of Riley's friends the other day. My favorite class in high school was drafting. Oh. I took drafting class four years. Um, I, I can draw you pictures of houses and <laughs> floor plans and all of that probably still. And I loved it. I thought it was great, but Everybody does all that stuff now on computers, so I'm glad that I didn't choose that as a job because I would be completely out of my own. All right. That's how, they, that's how they teach you. They start you out on paper, and then do they put they? you in. Yeah. Good. They make you do it on I think paper everybody knows how to use, well. like, the drafting tables and the T-squares and the cool pencils. I always love yeah. the cool pencils. I'm a nerd. <laughs> it's Okay. All right. Well, I know all of our favorite subjects, not in school, but in life, um, is Disney. So let's talk about Disney movies. It could be Disney animated movies. It could be Star Wars. It could be Marvel. But we are talking tonight about henchmen. So before we get Hinch started, people. like, what? <laughs> hench people? <laughs> I've got to be inclusive. I'm sorry. <laughs> Although now that you say it, I don't know if I can think of a female hench. I've person. got one. Cancel. One of Disney's my, canceled. One of, one of mine is. I've got one. Okay. Well, I've got, All right. Seen. So it's just my anti feminist brain, I guess, right now, not able to think of a female <laughs> hench person. A hencher. We're just going to call them henchers now. But let's talk about what, like, what qualities, if you were to pick, like, a henchman for yourself. If you were a villain and you had to pick a henchman, what qualities would that character have to have to be good? I think loyalty and sticking with the plan, no matter how stupid or wrong it is, and trying to pull back whenever they get into that long monologue describing their plan. They like need right to, now, I need to stop you. Right. <laughs> You'd be my henchman. You'd have to dial me back in to get me back on task to finish the to hit our goal. That's a okay. good point. I think the loyalty thing is probably the biggest thing with a henchman. And yeah. they have to be a yes man for the most part, too, right? Like Jeff said, you, they have to just go with your plan and, and do your bidding. So, yeah, for, my, for me, it's somebody that's not very good at their job, but they, like you said, loyalty, definitely brawn over brains and a horrible shot. You don't, you don't want them to act you don't want them to act Spoiler them. alert. Uh oh, I think we. Kevin, if you were hiring a henchman, you'd be like, okay, can you aim at that target over there? And if you miss it 10 out of 10 times, then you got you're, it. You're you're hired. Hired. Yeah, because if they ever turn on you, they'll miss. So, you know. Oh, I mean, that's a good point. Also, Gina, humor. 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 That'd be funny. That's a that's big a, That one, to yeah. add the, um, to the, you know, to the comedy aspect of things. Comic relief. I, that's what I had on my list was comic relief. <clears throat> But then I was thinking, like, does that apply? So when I think of Disney movies, I think of animated. That's just my my bias, mm -hmm. I guess. But does the comic relief aspect apply to henchmen in non-animated Disney shows? Like Star mm -hmm. Wars, for example? Uh, well, no. sometimes, maybe. I don't know. Not really. No. I, I'm trying to think of anybody that I would consider a henchman in Star Wars um, and Marvel that I think is funny. You know, that's interesting because I'm thinking too. And, and I, when I was going through this the last couple of days thinking about henchmen, I didn't think about any live action movies. Like none of them just popped into my head. See, so like Big Fortuna, maybe he's, maybe he's funny. He's not really funny, but he's, there's some funny aspects of you know, yeah. uh, Jabba the Hutt's, he's, he's a, um, 
the way the thing around yeah. really, what, yeah. what, what is he what is he he's a he's a toilet right yeah i think and so. he's got the the mandrels and uh gotcha. the long fingernails and the teeth and he's kind of yeah. funny he speaks he speaks Hatties, and that's kind of that sounds funny so sure yeah okay all right I think battle, battle droids too i mean the battle yep, droids are for sure they're, they're mindless machines that you know they're cannon fodder for you know, the clone troopers so yes salacious be calm yeah <laughs> salacious crime is that what you said i like him <laughs> there he is monkey kawaki oh, that guy ranger. Yep. Gotcha. All right. So I had most of the things that you guys had on my list. I said, follows, you know, directions blindly, hardworking, even if they flub up a lot, comic relief, they believe in the villain. Um, but here's a question. Do they need to be evil also? I don't think most of the time they are. I think most of the time they're just blindly loyal, subservient people who just kind of want a friend that's going to pay attention. So they're to them. desperate. Yeah, yeah. I, I like you know their motivation, Jeff. That that's cool to me. You've done a, a deep psyche evaluation of, of henchmen on the whole. I love that. Th that's how I got Carly. I needed a henchman. She fits all these things. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> hey, John, that couch. I'll, I'll it's very right comfortable. Over. Yep. <laughs> I was saying you were my henchman, but all right, fine. All right, so let's get into who is the. Are we going best first? I think who, what it, what makes the okay. best henchman? The best henchman. So we already talked about what makes a great henchman. Mm -hmm. So who is the best henchman? And let's go in reverse. Let's start with John. Okay, I'm gonna go with Iago. Um, from mm -hmm. Aladdin. I just I think, think that he was evil enough. He was funny. He did everything he was supposed to do. Um, you know, he executed all the plans and everything. Um, but I, I think he just did the job very competently and he was great at it. So I, I think Iago is probably what I would think of as the best henchman because he was just Jafar's like, he kept Jafar on course, like Jafar had all the plans and everything, but Yago made sure they got executed, right? Which was, I think a, a really good quality of a henchman is, is being and, good at executing the plans laid out by the visionary, who in this case is Jafar. And something that was really interesting about Yago is, you know, he's, to anybody else, he would be the, an annoying bird just squawking in his ear and things like that. And Jafar, as evil as he was, he still put up with it. And I don't, I never really understood that. But it had I, to be the loyalty. And that's what I think it was. Yeah. That the loyalty yeah. and that he was so good at doing his job. Because mm -hmm. he did give it good input too. He, you know, I said earlier I thought a good good henchman needed to be like a yes man, right? But in this case, I don't think Yago is necessarily a yes man. He gives feedback and and he tells them his plans are are not great and helps them improve them. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe he's even more of a, a villain, but um, but yeah, I think he's to me, he's the best. I could hear Jeff whine as soon as you said it. I'm guessing that means his was also Iago. So it was Iago, but okay. I'll let John keep Iago on this one and I'll come up with my second base. But Iago was who I had as my primary villain. For different reasons henchman. than John? No, or? pretty much just for everything John said. But that was my primary henchman. My, good the one. best henchman. All right. I, I think he's a really good henchman also because he even though Jafar has the plans, there are moments that Iago outsmarts Aladdin. And Aladdin's whole goal and his whole role is to be this very clever, street smart character. Mm -hmm. And there's Iago who like swoops in, haha, <laughs> get it, swoops, mm -hmm. swoops in and foils some of his plans and tricks him. So nice one, I, I like no, that. I he didn't even make my list. I guess I didn't even think of him wow. at all. He, he his name didn't make the list, but on the on our text group, I said, Bert, you know, they're bird, you know, um, henchmen, and I named some others, but that's who I was talking about. about. I just mm -hmm. couldn't remember his name off the top of my head. There you go. All right, Gene, so who is yours? Uh, very best uh, and probably favorite. I can come up with a different one, but uh, Fennec Shand. And I should have, before wow. I said that, what I should have done is gone back and made some 
some ask some questions. So are goons and minions and not from the from the movies, but just yeah. the term minion are and sidekicks are, are is are those henchmen? I mean, are they the same? Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. I, I would say Finnick is not a yes person. Yes woman, yes person. Um, I would say she's more of a partner to Boba Fett, yeah. um, but you know, a sounding board, a partner. Um, I, she's cool. She is a super cool character. Ming Na Wen is an awesome actor. She's been a you know several different you know things that we've all seen. You know, Agents mm-hmm. of Shield, um, different things. Mm-hmm. But um, great character, and like I said, she's more than just a yes person. And there's no, she's not a fop. She's not a, um, she's not comic relief. She's just a good, solid partner character, and Boba Fett's kind of an anti-hero anyway at this point. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know if that technically qualifies, but I'm gonna, that's where I'm going. That's my story. Nice. She's is she just in the book of Boba Fett, or has she appeared in other? She's in. Stuff? She was in Mandal- the Mandalorian before that. The first, the Mandalorian. Seven she's also also in Bad Batch. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So. so she's got some longevity too. She's just oh, yeah. she's, she's a sitcom <laughs> like in the early nineties. And she is a very you know? good shot. Yeah, she is a very good <laughs> shot. <laughs> so Kevin she's is awesome. like not my hench person. Can't have her. And she's Mulan too. You know that? Mm-hmm. I did not. She's the voice of Mulan. In the oh, cartoon. Not the live yeah, in action. The cartoon. Yeah. Wow. In the cartoon. Okay. Yep. Nice. Okay. Well, Kevin, she, I'm she is a Disney second. princess. She's a Disney princess, a Marvel hero, and um, a Star Wars character. So that's kind of that's better than like um, that's ever done that. Yeah, or, or God, oh. you know. Yeah. I was trying to figure out Marvel, and Jeff said Agents of Shield. So mm-hmm. nice. All right, Kevin. So we know it's not Fennec Shand because she's a good shot. Who is your hench person? <laughs> so you'd think that it'd be Star Wars, but it's actually not. Because they're not the best henchmen. I think the best henchmen, and hopefully I'm not stealing this one from you, is uh, Flotsam and Jetsam from uh, yes, <laughs> Little Mermaid. That was my two. That was my backup. I was going Long with Kevin. Hard, Jetsam yeah. crying in the corner with the physics student. <laughs> <laughs> so I, they're the first ones that came to my mind because they, unlike most henchmen, they they win. I mean, they they did everything exactly right. They convinced, you know, the king's daughter to go give up her, you know, fins for the feet, I guess. And um, they were smart enough to, they're just crafty. And I mean, um, they, they're completely in unison. They work together, uh, effective at their jobs. And they, I mean, it's just, they're just really, you know, diabolical characters. A lot more than, you know, like the Beagle Boys and, play, and characters like Yeah, and the other thing about them too is, you know, they're creepy. They are super creepy when you see them in the dark, kind of their eyes moving. Right, and that's what I started to wonder: Do hench people have to be creepy? I don't think so, but I think it does add something to it. You know, especially with them, I think the creepiness factor really like stepped them up as you know that next level. Because I, I was thinking about them too as either you know, one of the best, I guess, or one of the top five, maybe we'll say. And since yeah. they were my second, just adding on to what Kevin said, they knew the plan and they steered her to the plan and she they kept the plan on. So even when Ariel was trying to make some progress to get through, they tipped the boat. They, I mean, they were all there in the background, just foiling all the attempts. And they, they were my number two behind Iago, which John stole, and then Plotsam and Jetsam, which then Kevin stole. So... <laughs> I really expected like older characters from you, but all right. So since we might have been covered, then what's your? <laughs> okay, so my best would be Kronk from The Emperor's New Groove, which the very first time I watched this movie, I absolutely hated it. And then after we had Riley and I went back and watched it as I was older, I, I kind of really fell in love with the Kronk character. He follows blindly. He's very hardworking, even though he goofs up almost everything. He does exactly what she says. 
pull the lever while he ignores the fact that she's standing on the, the little platform there where the lever falls. Um, he has great comic relief. He really believes in Yzma. Um, he definitely is not evil. Like he is a very likable, lovable character, but there's just something about him that he's somebody that if I were hiring a hench person, in this case, a hench man, because he's a man, he's somebody that I could see myself spending time with because he wouldn't be awful to hang out with. Kind of fun, laid back, easygoing. Um, but he's got lots of really great attributes. He can speak squirrel and, you know, he gets along with people so he could kind of worm his way into everybody's heart and then pounce at the last minute whenever I told him to. So I chose Kronk as the best, mainly because of that following blindly piece. He was a really good one. And he made that movie, I think, too. I mean, between him and David Spade playing um, the Emperor, I, I think, you know, those two just really that made that movie awesome. Because I was the same way. I watched it. I didn't like it. I was like, this is not good. And then I watched it again once we got Disney+, Plus, and now I love that movie. It's it's one, mm -hmm. probably one of my favorites. And Croc is a big reason why. Right? He totally steals yeah. the show. Yeah. And, and th that actor is just awesome. I mean, he's yeah. got... It, like I love the show Rules of Engagement with him in it. He was just hilarious, right? And then he's the voice and or the guy in uh, uh, Soren, right? That's doing yes. the video beforehand. So yeah, it's just it's a great voice. It's a great everything. Yes, I I, I adore him. You gave me a dirty look when I said Kronk. I don't What's know wrong that, with I, Kronk? I, I don't know that he's the best villain. I think he's. I more, didn't say villain. Or the I henchman. Said henchman. I, I know. I don't think he's the best henchman. I think he's probably your favorite. But is he really the best? He's actually not my favorite. I know. That's what. All right. So is that where we're going next? His favorite. Sure. Okay. These are arguably different because my best is definitely not my favorite. Should I? Should I just dive right into sure. that? Okay. So my my favorite. And I'm going to have to add an S to that because they come as a package set is pain and panic from Hercules. Mm. I, I think that they are just hilarious. They screw everything up. Um, they're the entire reason that we have the entire movie of Hercules because it would have been a very quick movie had they actually made the baby drink all of the liquid every last drop like they were supposed to. Um, but I think it's, it's fun that they make those mistakes They recognize that they made the mistake and then they try to cover it up at every step. And I also love that, you know, Hades gets so angry at them and they act like little children, but they're wearing the Hercules merchandise. So they've got on the, the Herc air shoes and they've got the Hercules <clears throat> drink and they're like, what, what? We didn't even know there was anything wrong with it. So they've just got the personality that makes the movie super fun um they follow blindly uh hard working maybe maybe not but they definitely have that comic relief and i think that that's why they're my favorite overall how about you we'll let you go first since everybody stole yours last time well mine's probably not going Good to call. Okay. um my favorite henchman is ed the hyena from oh. the lion king I just not the other two. The other two kind of do their jobs and they're just decent at what they're doing. Well. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, but he is by far my favorite. Just <laughs> that, that's exactly why, Gene. <laughs> that, that that picture of you doing that, we're gonna still shot, and that's gonna be the cover photo for this episode. <laughs> but he provides all the comic relief. He has no idea what he's doing, he has no idea why he's there. He's not a bad person. He just kinda he was born into the wrong family and just He's fun. So he he's that sounds good. exactly like me. That's my story. <laughs> I, have no I, idea what I I'm was doing going here. to also add in that he's one crayon shy of a box. Does that also describe you? Pretty much. <laughs> so I'm going with Ed. That's good. That's he, a good one. He definitely has the comic relief factor. I'm not sure that he's likable though. Why isn't he? I mean, he's kind of a jerk. Eh. The other two are not him. Okay, he's just the dumb one that follows along. Exactly. Everybody has that one friend, John. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Shots fired. 
All right, Gene, <laughs> let's go to you before Me? I just tune you out. <clears throat> so, um, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go Star Wars again, and I might be. It, this might be argued that this person isn't a henchman, but um, but he is because he's a he's an apprentice. So Darth Maul is one of my very favorite Star Wars characters. Um, he, you know, he really in the movies he only got a little bit of time, but it was really extended and in, in the Clone Wars and and even Rebels. Um, so good, such a great character. Um, I really, I really do like that character. And so that's why he's one of my favorites. I have a lot of honorable mentions, but I just tell you, um, you guys know I'm nostalgic and that, you know, King Louie from, is he henchman? I don't know. He's just a side character, but not a good guy. Uh, King Louie, um, the, uh, the two henchmen from the 101 Dalmatians, Horace and Jasper, and every classic Disney movie has bumbling idiot henchmen. And I love them. They're just, they're just great. You know, that was a big topic of discussion in our house is where is the line between henchmen to villain? Yeah. Like, right. Is Darth yeah. Maul a villain? I mean, he was kind of the main he bad guy. He started as a movie. henchman. He started but as a henchman. He's a henchman. Well, he's a henchman. Then, then he turns villain. Cause we, like Anakin, we said he was probably a henchman towards the end of the third episode for the emperor. Yeah, he right. When he became Vader, he then became a villain. So yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. you can transition as well we've had that was a big for sure for sure with darth maul left left the sith and um became the leader of crimson dawn you know his own crime syndicate and it was his own villain uh but he began as a henchman he had to yeah you know, he had to make his bones so to speak you know that's right yeah i love his development in clone wars mm -hmm. like you you go back and forth between feeling bad for him and starting to trust and like him and then you know, you're back to, oh my gosh, you're an awful thing and I hate you and yeah. how dare you. And then it twists again. It's it's so good. You still need to watch Clone Wars and that's another yeah. Sam Witwer, You and Lonnie, Sam man. is so good at that. Mm, he's so good. All right, Kevin, are you a Star Wars person this time? I am this time. So my favorite is a classic. It's the Stormtroopers. Um, I got to go with them. They have always been, you know, kind of my view of the best henchmen. You know, they follow, they follow the orders blindly. Uh, they're not always the smartest. They're the worst shot. They bang <laughs> their heads on the columns when they're walking down the hall. You know, they, they just sometimes just don't understand, don't get it. Um, you know, they're intimidating. They're intimidating. A bunch of them with, with blasters, as long as you can stand still, they probably can't hit you. You know, you just kind of walk off. I know, time. right? You have to move into it. They get they get confused a lot with Jedi and stuff like that. So, I really like them. They're they've always been kind of my epitome of henchmen. So. And they sure. also have a really good story arc. Whenever you dive into the offshoots and the different parallel stories of Star Wars that you don't necessarily get from the main movies, but then you start to see their characters develop and you start to get attached. And then whenever they become the bad guys, it's. Well, and some of the newer content, you know, rebels and some, I'm thinking Andor will get into that a little, a little bit more. Um, you kind of see what happened with Finn in the new, the new trilogy that a lot of them were brainwashed. They were stolen from their family, similar mm -hmm. to the Jedi. Um, and then, you know, brainwashed into blindly following orders. So. Yes. All right, Crawl, you're up. Okay, so you kind of took my one of my two choices, Kronk, as your best. So I'm going to save that one um, and not say he's my favorite, even though he's he's up there. Um, but I'm going to go with LeFou, Le, LeFou from Beauty and the Beast because he's just hilarious. I love, in the animated one, I love him because <laughs> the songs and everything. Um, he's a terrible uh, henchman from my point of view. I mean, he I guess he helps guests on a little bit, but like he doesn't seem to know what's going on a lot. He did a few good things, right? Like, um, you know, he got Maurice to, to tell him about the beast and all that kind of stuff. But mm, come on. I mean, the guy just, he's not really much of a help to guest on other than stroking his ego. Uh, but he's... Yeah just he's just funny and then in the live action movie he's hilarious as well and i just i love the the songs he has and everything he's just so into it and he just loves gaston he looks up to him 
and Gaston treats him like a crappy little brother. I just, I, I don't know everything about he, and he takes it and he just goes with it. I like it. I don't know. Something but have about you seen the bit to me? Have you so seen what? the movie back in the France Pavilion that maybe he wasn't he, he wasn't a henchman though all the time. He was a double agent. Oh, I did not see Ooh. that. I'm gonna have to. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to go. Yeah. My kids uh, have the attention span, and so do I, of of probably a gnat. I would imagine. <laughs> um, so sitting through some of those movies has just not happened. I feel like to believe that sing along storyline, though, like you have to have a character that's more intelligent than Lafou who can't spell Gaston. It's maybe no that's part of the web of intrigue, Carly. Yeah, like Darth Jar Jar. You know, there you go. Dark, dark, dark. You got to dive deep yeah. into that undercover stuff to really sell it. Jar Jar is an act. Sith Master, right? Yeah. Nothing Aww. to see here. I, I doubt LeFou is like uh, some some evil genius. I think he's just some dude who felt cool because Gaston liked him and he started hanging out. And I, I think he has a decent heart, too. That's the other th thing why I like him. I don't think he's a terrible person. I don't think he's, you know, trying to kill the beast or anything, right? So... To me, that all makes him more likable. And I just mm -hmm. think he's fun. So not a I lot of I have him on my list. I was considering some of my favorite, the best, the worst, the blah. And LeFou was actually on there, and I had written by his name that he's very likable. And at the end, he seems changed. Like, he could come back in a different movie and be a good guy and be okay. Um, which maybe that's why I just... I don't like him as a henchman. He's not evil enough. I don't know. And he's kind of cute with those chubby little cheeks. Like <laughs> that's also why people like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Hmm. All right. Speaking of worst. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the transition there. Yeah, here you go. All right. So let's talk about what we. We've talked about the, the best. We've talked about our favorite. Let's talk about the worst. But, like, <clears throat> what makes the worst henchmen? Is it the, their personality is the worst is and they're the, just a horrible or are they just mad at their job? Is it opposite of the best? Like, or is it just something in each personality that you just find blah? Probably that. Yeah. Mine is more the, so, in my, I've got a tie on mine and mine as far as worst is it's, it's a, a henchman that's that goes against what we had as our our number one quality and that's loyalty and and the two that tied on that on mine they turned on their leader i mean that to me that would make them be a anti-henchman i am intrigued it, you've got to tell us now i, I know All exactly right. who he's talking about i i hope you didn't pick the same I ones i did so. so mine mine is a tie between Mirage from The Incredibles and the hyenas from Lion King. Oh, I love the hyenas. They're awesome. But at the end, they, they say, okay, Scar, you're not what you were. I'm, I'm coming after you. And Mirage kind of did the same thing. Um, whenever she didn't, didn't like the way things were going, she turned on the leader. And so I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing being the worst henchman. I think it's actually a good thing. It shows that even, even somebody that, is a follower or sheep or whatever can can realize what what's happening and actually go against it. I mean, Ben kind of did that in in uh, as a as a stormtrooper. So, mm -hmm. but definitely not somebody you would hire, right? <laughs> Especially with all those teeth, that would be really bad. All right, crawl. Well, okay, so mine are um, Cinderella's evil stepsisters, which. Pains me to say a little bit because I love the interaction with them at like 1900 Park Fair and mm -hmm. um, just out in Magic Kingdom when you see them. They're hilarious in live and in person. But I just feel like they were, you know, they were the stepmothers. They, they kind of executed her plan of hurting Cinderella and stuff. And, and it just annoyed. It's always annoyed me since I was a little kid. Like this girl comes into their family because her dad died. And her sisters, you know, they should be having this great life together and everything else. But these two are just being complete jerks to her for no reason other than she has a different dad than them. Right. And 
it's just terrible. And I really like it, it's bothered me since I was a little kid how bad they treated her and making her do the chores and all this kind of stuff. And I was so happy in that movie. One of the few things, you know, that that I took out of it that I liked because there's a lot I didn't like about it, like with chasing the prince and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, the fact that she was kind of like the better person and she didn't do mean things to them and, you know, that type of thing. So, um, I just really hate them for that. <laughs> so, you know, my, the, the worst, maybe not the worst, but definitely my least favorite, uh, henchmen would be those two. So what Anastasia and, and Drizzly, what? Drizella. <laughs> Drizzly. Drizella. Drizzly. Drizzly. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I just, I cannot stand them, how bad they treat her for no reason. Like, okay, yeah, no so reason. it was her dad instead of your mom that passed away, and now you're going to be a complete jerk to her. And I really don't think if it was the opposite and their mom would have died and they moved in with Cinderella and her dad, they wouldn't have treated treated her, <laughs> you know, those two like that. So yeah. I don't know. It really, it just, it gets my goat, if you will. Mean girls. And they <laughs> yeah. don't even have like, funny personalities that no. count, like, it. and that's what it i mean like in person though they're hilarious but yeah in in the movie they're not like doing it for any reason other than to make their own lives better and selfish and they even like try to turn on each other so i'm mm -hmm. i'm not a fan all right gene which one this is difficult because um <laughs> sir hiss for sure from um really yeah. Oh, what? He's not the worst. It, I told you it's difficult. He's, I mean, he's funny and all, but he's, he's useless. But he was keeping King John on the track. I mean, he's he's like the lookout for it. You can't help that he kind of got shafted and thrown into like a. He should have been better, barrel. Jeff. He should have been better. <laughs> yeah, maybe if he's better at his job. If he's better at his job, yeah. Maybe the hiring process was. Was just not they didn't hire well, you know. Who, yeah, who HR knows? back in the Middle Ages, yeah, just non-existent. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a failure from top to bottom, Jeff, of the organization, you know, mm -hmm. of, of the 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 Kingdom of England. <laughs> I mean, he is I told you that was a that was really a struggle. That worst villain was really a struggle for me because our mm -hmm. worst henchman was really a struggle for me um, because it's not I still like of him. England. He's, it, it's Sherwood uh, Forest. Just, it just, it's not the Kingdom of England. They ran well, Sherwood but, Forest. Uh, King John, who was off in the cru Crusades, was the King of England. Thank you very much, Jeff. Prince, I'm sorry, King, not John. King, History who's the king? Favorite, Richard. John, King Richard. Richard. John, Richard. Prince John, who's the Prince of England, not Great Britain, but, not the United Kingdom. That was before all that. But yeah, it's Sherwood Forest. This is just where the sheriff was, man. Come on. And no, the sheriff is actually nodding him. Oh my gosh. That's what are I mean. Are we like See, you're confusing me. Jurisdiction here. <laughs> Is that what's happening? It's wow. I would it just like, like to say he's know. a snake, so he automatically goes to the bottom of my list for anything. Right. Well, that's part of it too, because because he hisses. Yes. Like Ka, you know. Yeah. From the Jungle Book. I mean, I don't like. I don't like snakes, so they're terrible. Right. That's really what it boils down to. From mm. Ursula's side kicking. All right. Does that just leave me? You, me yeah. Too. Oh yeah, you. I'll let you go first because otherwise, if I steal yours, you're gonna you're gonna cry. I don't think you'll take mine. Probably not. If, if you're looking at Disney as a whole, of the main villains, oh. and you see where things are now, and you look at the board of directors as being the villain, then you'd have to think Bob he or Bob oh Kapek would gosh. be the best tension, right? He's like the worst. <laughs> Sorry, I, I digress off of that a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, actually, my person that does the worst tenching, I think, is Horace and Jasper. And I know, Gene, that shot's okay. fired back at you. But I'm okay. I just, Animated, live action, both. I would say both. The only saving grace to the live action would be that one of them is played by Hugh Laurie. And I'm a big fan of Hugh Laurie, so that, that kind of helps him a bit there. But I, I just don't like that you steal puppies and that's all they do they're yeah. driving around in a rickety van and steal puppies to just, make a fur coat it's pretty terrible but that's what Corolla told them to do i know but they didn't do very well <laughs> they're just kind of they lost the, you have 101 dogs they got 101 you to get one. Yeah. <laughs> how do you lose them all there you have like a giant you lost every dog so because they're idiots you don't like them. yeah it's just very they're much. really bad at what they do okay so 
So I'll, I'll leave Bob Chapek aside. And I'll go with Horace and Jasper instead. But who is also really bad at what he does? <laughs> yeah, but he, I think he would be the villain, the main yeah. villain, not not the henchman, hench person. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, you're up. All right, so I'm waiting for all of you to to yell at me really badly. I, you guys know that I don't like the Renaissance super classic Disney movies at all. It's not and one of them, they're the old ones. One of them yeah. that I super dislike is Peter Pan. I do not like Peter Pan whatsoever. Are you gonna and say Smee? I'm gonna say Smee. Like, I mean, we're talking about the same guy that voices what Winnie the Pooh or Piglet or something. He's just this lots of stuff, white haired <laughs> old man. He doesn't have any idea what he's doing. He just whines a lot. He's like, <laughs> Captain Hook, Captain Hook. And just, he doesn't do anything well. He's, he trips all the time. Like, he's just dumb. And I don't like dumb people. He's not in the good enough shape to be running around. Yeah. The pirates <laughs> have like a, a, a He's Macarena. just a, a walking hazard. Yeah. yeah he's a walking sure. hazard. I you know, know that Hook doesn't age. Mushu would have him good. gone in a day. <laughs> he got I, his bob his hand chopped off. <laughs> he just stumbles over his words. He, I don't know. There's just something that I just really don't like about him. And it's funny because he's probably one of the nicer henchmen that you could pick out of a Disney movie. He just, you know, he's probably like growing super old and he's a grandpa now and talks about Captain Hook as an old friend somewhere to his grandkids. But I I prefer, you know, Iago or any of these super evil, terrible things, Jasper and Horace even, who want to kill puppies over so you don't Mr. Kill Smee, who's just dumb and can't do his job. Well, like He would have been fired a long time ago. You don't like old people. That is not what wow. I said. That is not what I said. That's what I heard. No, I. Mm, yeah, that's no. what I heard too. That's, I heard that as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I said. So, who's anybody have some honorable mentions for any of the categories that they just want to toss out? I feel like you do because you said no, it. No, no, Gene just said he had a long list, so I'd like to hear. I mean, you think of any category. movie, you know, you think of. Like the Avengers movies and Thanos has, you know, I can't, the names don't come to mind right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Kevin can tell us who they are, but, you know, he's got his hench people. Uh, there's the executioner mm -hmm. that was played by, um, oh my gosh, Carl Urban in mm -hmm. Thor Ragnarok, who's kind of a, you know, just, he's trying to be some, he just wants to be somebody, you know, and there's, there's a lot of, a lot of good henchmen and all the old, you, you said, Carly, you don't like the old Disney movies. I do. You know, one of those things is, is the henchman like i was just looking up like the rescuers and i, I have not Brutus. seen it in years but yeah there's uh in I, I can't even think of it but like the frog and the toad movie i mean there's there's gonna there's got to be henchmen there's every single movie and they're always good and they're bubbling idiots and they're comic relief and they're they're just good yeah brutus was close to making my list and so was joanna from <laughs> the rescuers uh -huh. i like both of them yeah, I, had the, I had the Beagle Boys on my list as honorable mentions. That's what that was I was fun. wondering. Nobody had mentioned the Beagle Boys. They're kind of jerks. And Ma yeah, Beagle, she's Ma the Beagle. Worst. She reminds me of the lady on uh, the Goonies. The Goonies, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing I think with another, her too. Another movie with good henchmen. Right? Yeah. Nobody mentioned Maleficent's Raven, Diablo. No one? No. Did you no. see the live action one, though? I liked him in that, that. Right? He's very likable in there. Yeah. But then that kind of brings in the question whether Maleficent is actually a villain or not. So. Oh, yeah. Like, and, and she's not. Is that's, there that's a henchman? Clear. I don't know. Clear, no. More of a sidekick. More of a sidekick. Right. Why don't we call heroes underlings henchmen? Right. I don't know. I've never looked up the definition of a henchman to even see it. Maybe we should have before we started this, but hey. that's too late now. Um, <laughs> oh, it says a faithful follower or supporter, especially one prepared to engage in crime or dishonest practices. Hmm. 
So I think we're right on there. We are. We've mm -hmm. got this. For sure. You know what else we are always right on with? Our amazing jokes. I, I'm so excited because I don't know if I've told you guys this, but in class, I always tell really awful jokes that my whole intention is just to get the kids to groan and get me like I'm stupid, which always is fantastic. And so I've got like a whole slew of jokes now from our podcast that I can throw out there. So what do we have to add to my repertoire tonight, guys? I tested mine out on Riley today and she laughed. So I'm for sure going with the one here. What is a windmill's favorite music? They're a big metal fan. <laughs> I, like it. I like it too. It's bad. All right. Why do, storm got, troopers, why do stormtroopers only have iPhones? Because they can't find the androids that they're looking for. <laughs> oh, nice. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. We're totally oh, using that one. All right, uh, did, you know, did you know you can get paid for sleeping? It's a dream job. Nice. <laughs> I, I don't have a joke for y'all, but I did want to share some news with you. You know, I was in, I was at the beach a few weeks ago, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if I told you I, there, there was a shark attack. I got attacked by a shark. It, it, it completely beat bit and uh, destroyed my whole left side. Um, would y'all believe me if I told you I was all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We saw those 14 footers down at your beach. Yeah, like no joke though, for yeah, real. Yeah, there's oh. quite a few of them right by that pier, not far from you. They were terrifying. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Just saying. They're probably working for Ursula. All right, I have a villain-themed joke. I, I've prepared it all night. So, what do you call five Siths piled on top of a lightsaber? A Sith kebab. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, See, that's the that's the reaction yeah. all of my yeah. students give me. So it's okay. nice. You guys are preparing me well. All right. Yeah. Well, that wraps up our show tonight. And I think almost wraps up our entire series on the, one, one more. We've got one more. We've got sidekicks. sidekicks. So we'll talk about hero sidekicks in the future here. But um, you can always go back and listen to our best favorites worst and blah villains and heroes if you are just catching this episode on its own in the meantime don't forget to check us out on our socials we are on facebook instagram twitter and drum roll guys it was jean's fantastic idea to add TikToks. tock baby right? <laughs> a disney with the ducks tick tock and I, guys, I've got to tell you, I asked Riley because, you know, she's a teenager and is therefore an expert on all things TikTok. I, I was thrilled that we had almost 70 followers. I was like, look, Riley, we're TikTok famous. She's like, no, no, you need more than that. And I said, well, one video has over 4,000 views. That's like, holy cow, that's more people than I know. And she's like, no. So, you know, if you're listening, head over to TikTok, follow us, <laughs> like some videos, make me TikTok famous with my kid because so far she still doesn't think that we're cool. So that wraps up everything for us tonight, guys. Please like, subscribe, follow, do all the things on all the socials and on YouTube, and we will catch you again next week. Quaharini, everybody. You know, sometimes I even amaze myself. <laughs> <laughs> certainly amazes us every day gene <laughs> thanks guys good night all right so let's get into this henchman discussion that's your transition you guys sit and roasted me with jumping right into it from the thing wow. <laughs> that's how you do it that's you though this is carly yeah. yeah. No, but I am confident. I am a confident woman. I can do this. Wow. You ready? Go for it. <laughs> All right. Nice, screwed me all up. Not so much confidence though, is there? <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit this one. Jeff, if you need a couch to sleep on, I've got one in my basement. You're welcome to it for a couple weeks. Yes, here you go. <laughs>
And I thought we could talk about maybe the differences between Disney henchmen and like Star Wars or Marvel henchmen or like they those know. are still Disney henchmen. Thank you. I uh, but they weren't originally. If they're not, then I can get off. I I need to get off the show. Yeah. Then, oh. then I, <laughs> yeah. I don't have any. No, know. I just I feel like there's animated henchmen and then there's like legit movie henchmen. So. It's a great discussion, but um, you know, sounds to me like you've got your mind made up. So you just said you know, what it needs to be. Yeah. I'm tired of being y'all's whipping boy. Yeah. As a concerned watcher, no, you gotta put that on there. May I suggest you find a replacement for Gene? Thank you, concerned listener and viewer. Concerned anonymous I watcher. In Southwest Louisiana, everybody's always um, uh, surprised to hear that we our milk was in bags. So we had our milk really? was in clear bags, uh, sort of like a Capri Sun, like you had to poke it like that. It didn't have a designated place for a for a hole, but it was clear plastic bags that a, a local dairy <laughs> did the milk in. Did you just like oh. bite into it then? Or? No, no, there was a straw. There was a straw. You had to you grip the you know you gripped it and you. I'm just it's picturing Tomo like, like ripping a bag open. A full of milk. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. Is you just yeah, with your teeth just going at it. I'm, I'm not gonna say that it never happened. Oh, uh, we we had the the paper milk container that you can never open. Yeah, those are you the try worst. one side and you don't get it open. Then you open the other side and then you end up with spilling chocolate right. milk all over mm -hmm. yourself. And, right. See, bags are better. You've got the big bags open are square at the top. Yeah. All right, we gotta cut. Just losing it. I don't know why I missed it. Well, together, my man. Gene said you poke it. It's just right in your eye. What are you gonna do? <laughs> it's true. I didn't hear that. Yeah. I didn't hear that either. But I didn't oh. hear you. <laughs> <laughs>